Well, welcome back, folks. Today we're going to talk about putting a fine finish on the mating surfaces of things like cylinder heads and cylinders. And originally I was intending to incorporate this uh, process that you're going to see here in a minute into the video or videos of installing the cylinders and cylinder heads on the YL1. But I thought since this is fairly generic, that is, it can be really used for any, any bike, any project of similar nature, I thought I'd separate it off and create a shop talk uh, video uh, rather than incorporate it into the uh, installation of the cylinders and cylinder heads. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now I have here a surface plate, a small surface plate that I've owned for several years now. Uh, I originally bought it for use in my machining. Uh, some of you know I have a lathe, actually I've got two lathes, one of them's in pieces, and a small benchtop milling machine. And this is quite useful for laying out parts and other things that you do with uh, metal machining. But I have discovered it works really well for this process that is uh, surfacing of flat components. Now, one does not need a surface plate to do this. For years, I used a piece of glass. In fact, I think I've even talked about that on some other video, probably the TS-185 Suzuki, but you have to forgive me. I don't remember which video it was right off the top. You can use a nice piece of glass, which is perfectly fine. I did that for years. So if you get yourself a nice, fairly thick piece of glass, this plate glass, and you can get it at uh, almost any glass supplier and then uh, put it on a, a flat surface, keep it clean, then tape your uh, sandpaper or brace material to the glass. That'll work just as well as a surface plate actually. But I'm going to use a surface plate because I have it and it's very flat. What I've done to prepare here is this is a piece of 500 grit sandpaper. Any fine grit sandpaper will do. I generally work with 400 or 500 grit for a process like this. Uh, use whatever works best for you. I've got it taped down all the way around as you can see here with masking tape to get it nice and flat. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use this uh, YL1 cylinder as my first test subject. I'm going to surface this mating component here where the cylinder head you know fits against it and you have to just be a little careful because this has been all painted here obviously and what you don't want to do is rock it if you do you're going to damage the paint and if that happens it's not critical you can touch that up I'm just going to try to avoid damaging the paint if at all possible so I've got the uh, media the sandpaper taped down nice and flat don't be surprised if you don't have to change this a couple times. This is a new piece, by the way. It has not been used. And I'm just going to place the, in this case, a cylinder upside down like that. I'm going to take two hands and I'm going to move it around like this in a figure eight. Like that. You can do circles if you want. I'm keeping constant pressure down. I'm gripping at the bottom here, I think you can see, because I don't want to tilt the uh, item. If you, the higher you get with your grip, the more likely you're going to tip. And you just go back and forth, something like that. And if this was a glass, a piece of glass versus the surface plate I'm using, the process will be identical. Do the exact same thing. And you just keep doing that. You take the item off right here, check it, and then you just keep doing that until you're satisfied with the surface finish. And of course, this will wear. This will wear over time. 
When I go to replace my sandpaper, I don't put the new paper over the top of the old because I don't want to introduce wrinkles. I'll just throw this away, wipe off the surface plate or piece of glass with some glass cleaner, and then retape fresh uh, sandpaper down. So that's basically the process, and uh, it usually doesn't take very long. There's no magic or secret to it. You do it until you're satisfied with the finish. It's, uh, it's difficult to get all imperfections out of this unless you wanted to spend a lot of time, and you certainly can do that if you wish. You know, I do have the option, though I'm not going to use it. I could put this over in my mill, clamp it down, and then just probably fly cut this with a fly cutter or a uh, standard milling uh, bit, mill, and mill, but I'm not going to. It would take me uh, far longer probably to set that up than it uh, will just to do this. Someday I might do that and then I'll uh, perhaps record that. At this point, I'm not going to do that for this project. And you just keep doing that over and over until you're satisfied. Now for the cylinder heads, it's exactly the same. Again, we're trying to just clean up and, and make sure that surface is flat. So we do the same thing. A little grit in there. Until you're satisfied with the finish. So that's the gist of it. I'm going to go ahead and do these four pieces, the, the two heads, the two cylinders. Then I'll bring you back at the other end and I'll just give you a brief shot and the view of what they look like when I'm all done. I'm not going to record the whole process for the next 30 minutes or whatever I'm going to use to, uh, to do these. But I'll, I'll bring you back a bit later. Well, it's been uh, probably close to an hour later. And I have finished uh, doing all four parts, the two cylinders, the two cylinder heads. And I consider myself about done. I've changed the uh, sandpaper, used three different pieces. These are the first two. This is the third. And I think you can see there about how that came out. Came out pretty good. What you're really looking for is around this rim here, which is where the gasket, these use a, a copper gasket. This is a new gasket, I've not used this before. This did not come off the bike. But where that gasket seats around the perimeter of the combustion chamber is really what you're after in terms of getting it clean and flat. So you want a nice even ring. When you get out into here, it really doesn't make a lot of difference because there's no gasket sealing surface there anyway. That'd be purely for cosmetic purposes if you wanted to get that flat as well. But it does a really nice job, as you can see there. In terms of the cylinders, see they're done too, same, th same way. Again, upside down and just work them around. One, and here's the second one. Now this one, I don't know if you can see it, I braided the paint a little bit. The only thing I can figure out is that outside cylinder is, is bent up just a little bit because I was very careful about keeping it flat, but you can see right along the edge here, I braided some of the paint, so I'm just going to quickly uh, touch that up Got a little chip. That chip I'll, I'll touch up with a brush. I think this I'll just wipe, wipe off, clean it off, and respray it before I go ahead and uh, mount these on the bike. 
One of the benefits, by the way, of using a surface plate versus glass is weight. I don't have to fight the surface plate when I'm doing the part, when I'm doing my circular motion like this. The surface plate, because it's very heavy, I think that's marble, stays put. If you use glass, again, very viable option, but you may have to tape it down around the perimeter on your workbench or your workspace, as well as taping the sandpaper or uh, abrasive paper down to the glass. But uh, I'm going to consider this done. Now these are going to get cleaned up. Obviously I'll, I'll wash them down really good again in hot soapy water. And I will consider these complete. Now if anyone's wondering why I didn't do this before I painted them, well, the primary reason I do this last is because it is last. So all the other handling that I do, uh, media blasting, all the other... Um, uh, work that goes into these before they get mounted on a bike, the last thing I like to do is refresh this surface. Could you uh, do this and then paint it? Yeah. You'd have to be real careful about masking it off. That would work. But my preferred way, and it's a risk because of the paint here, is to do that the very last thing in terms of handling and work on the parts before they go onto the bike. So we'll consider this uh, video complete at this point. Again, as usual, any questions, notes, comments, drop me a note. Otherwise, thanks for watching.